This week on TGC News, Nighthawk drops two new double stacks, Gunworks hits hard with a new big game rifle, and the gun industry cancels more events. Neomag offers a slick solution to discreetly carrying a spare magazine securely in your pocket. Available in small, medium, and large to hold anything from 380 to 10 mil. Also now available are the extended clip versions, which allow you to carry deeper in your pocket or carry your spare mag with an extension. Utilizing strong neodymium magnets, a steel backer, and titanium clips, these things are built to last. To get 10% off your entire order over at theneomag.com, use the code TGC10. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. I just want to say thanks to everyone that's been watching our videos lately. Without you guys, none of this matters. So thanks. Let's jump right into some news. First up this week, a couple new ones from Nighthawk Custom. They're called the TRS Commander and TRS Comp. TRS stands for Tactical Ready Series. Essentially, these are double stack 1911s or 2011s if you're not worried about trademarks. They are very similar guns, so let's run down the specs. They're both 9mm semi-autos with 17 round mags, a flat face trigger, a grip module that looks similar to other double stack 1911s but has an inlaid sort of dot texture all over. They both share a full length accessory rail underneath. Beyond that, you have the Commander with the four and a quarter inch barrel, front night sight and rear blacked out sight, and the same circle dot texture on the front and rear of the slide. The comp model differs in that it has a 5-inch barrel with a fully supported compensator at the end. The comp is what Nighthawk calls integrated, even to the point where, unlike the normal Gucci Glock style comps out there, this one is wearing the 18 karat gold bead front sight. It also foregoes the front slide texture in favor of that comp. Again, these guns are very similar, but I suppose that they should be if they're part of the same series, right? I apologize for the pain you're about to feel when I tell you the next part. The Commander has an MSRP of $4,000, and the comp has an MSRP of $4,600. There is no doubt in my mind that these guns will be outstanding. Nighthawk guns are fantastic, but that price, as you might suspect, will keep a few folks out of the experience. Also in new gun news, Rifle Dynamics has partnered with Clint Smith of Thunder Ranch for a signature edition. The premise of this partnership was to bring consumers a gun with Rifle Dynamics workmanship and attention to detail while still keeping it attainable for some of his students. So an AK with a more custom-built feature set than normal at a more affordable price than Rifle Dynamics custom guns. I'll run through the specs. 16-inch barrel with the 14 by one left-hand muzzle threads. It's got a tuned action, tunable front sight gas block combo, a fuller rear sight, tune trigger, and a couple of other trinkets. It comes standard in the foliage green color. Of course, if you want, you can bump it up with a different muzzle device, a scope rail, and some other stuff, but the base rifle is set up to go out of the box. The base pricing starts at five bucks shy of $1,600, and with all of the add-ons, it works out to be about $2,255. Considering the pricing for one of Rifle Dynamics standard models about 300 bucks more, this is actually solid value. I want to know what you guys think though. Are these custom or semi-custom guns worth the added dollars to you? Is the smoother action and overall better feel of the gun really worth it? I have a feeling I know what you're going to say and most of what you're going to say here, but let's hear about it down in the comments. This next rifle is from a company out of Wyoming called Gunworks. If you aren't familiar, their angle to the market is to provide high quality precision rifle packages for folks with deeper pockets. Their rifles are very, very nice and carry a price tag to match. However, like I said last week when we covered more expensive stuff, it seems like only expensive stuff is getting announced right now, I think it's fun to drool over super cool custom guns and really high end stuff. And the new Skull from Gunworks fits that category nicely. At the core, it's a dangerous game rifle, meant for folks to take over to Africa or up to Big Bear Country. It's available in three different cartridges that all carry some really hefty numbers. The 375 Ruger, which slings a 300 grain bullet downrange at about 
2,600 feet per second, the 338 Remington Ultra Mag, which throws a 250 grain bullet at about 2,800. And then the 416 Ruger, which will shoot a 400 grainer at 2,400 feet per second. Wow, that is a lot of muzzle energy. These are all really, really stout rounds. I'll run down a few of the specs on the gun. The action is Gunworks own, and the barrel is a 21 inch with a threaded muzzle. Both are made from stainless steel. The stock is Gunworks own climber carbon fiber unit with sections meant to look like wood. And the stock has some nice features like a negative comb to avoid face bruises from big recoil, a decent recoil pad, and an ergonomic grip, at least according to them. The stock also features a small Picatinny rail section for a bipod up at the front. The trigger is a trigger tech unit, and those are fantastic, so there's not really any wondering if that'll be good. The finish is a battle-worn Cerakote with some engraving on the receiver and on the end of the barrel where it meets the action. I mean, this is pretty cool. Overall, it's a really nice package. I think it looks beautiful. You guys know I have a special spot for big bore, especially when it comes to being touted as a 600 yard capable setup. However, we have to circle back. The base pricing, according to the rifle builder on their website, is $7,895. If you want to go all the way up to the top end by adding a scope and some other add-ons, you'll end up pushing the price past $11,000. This rifle is for a different type of buyer than me, that's for sure. It looks incredible, and I'd love to try one out, but I certainly am not the type of guy that can slam down eleven grand on a rifle and then the massive cost of actually going out and hunting with it. God bless capitalism for those of you that can do that. <laughs> I wish I was that guy, but congrats to you guys that can. Wow. Now, how about a little gun industry news? It seems the struggle bus is wearing a mask this week because there are a bunch more cancellations due to COVID-19. I'll try to keep this short. CMP has canceled their national matches at Camp Perry. IPSC has canceled their world shoot that was slated to happen in Thailand later this year and pushed that to 2021. And that moves a bunch of their other matches deeper into 2021 and even 2022. And TriggerCon, a sort of consumer trade show in the Pacific Northwest has been canceled until next year as well. It's a real challenge to predict how soon the world will come out of this downturn, but it seems like Gun brands around the world are saying, not until next year, which is a huge bummer. With that in mind though, how about some positive industry news? I'll keep these short too. <laughs> Trijicon was awarded a $41 million contract to refurbish the US Marine Corps ACOG optics. In similar news, Vortex announced that they entered into an agreement with the U.S. Army to submit an optic for the next-gen squad weapon. The optic they're submitting is pretty interesting because it's got a nice 1-8 to eight scope attached to a 1-kilometer laser rangefinder. It's got a ballistic computer and atmospheric sensors, which results in a display that's partially programmable, and it shows where to shoot, at least... That's the way I interpret it. I obviously have not put my hands on this. It seems very reminiscent of the constantly changing owner's tracking point optics. I bet it shares some of the same concepts and sort of brings them to another level, but only time will tell if my speculations are correct. What we all need to be thinking is, wow, optics are gonna be freaking cool in 10 years when all this stuff hits dealer shelves. Vertex makes some of the best EDC bags and gear around. Whether you're looking for a backpack, a messenger bag, or maybe something for your pup. They've got features like a rapid access weapon compartment, padded backing, a hot pull tab for quick access to the main compartment, and much, much more. Oh, and did I mention their jeans make my legs look better? <laughs> Seriously, I can do so many high kicks in these. And guys, if you wanna get a huge discount, head over to Vertex, that's V-E-R-T-X dot com and use our code TGC to get a whopping 25% off everything. Go do it. It's time now for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from our loyal supporters over at Subscribestar. If you aren't supporting us on there, Go do that. There's a link in the description. We'd love to have you. First up, Robert Getkin says, with the Warrior Poet Society Network airing in just over a month, do you think there will be a decline in gun content posted on sites like YouTube? 
And do you think we will see other gun-friendly networks pop up? As far as the amount of content, no, we will not see a drop in the amount of it until the sites force that drop. Smart creators will stay where the audience congregates. In regards to other networks, it's been tried many times. This is not a new thing, and most of them fail for one of two reasons, piss poor management or piss poor vision. Full30 is a prime example of a site that had tons of potential and never really got anywhere. It's been open for years and it's not a big deal. It's just not. I've been approached many times over by brands that claim to have the next big social media or video platform that's gun friendly, but they have to compete with sites like YouTube and Facebook that offer so much more than just a gun website with the exact same content that gets posted to YouTube. This is the problem. These sites, maybe I'll do another video on this, but these sites are like, hey, take the same content you're posting over on this site with lots of audience members and post it on ours where there's no audience. Why? I'll summarize it with, it is unlikely that other platforms will succeed. I think Warrior Poet Society Network has a lot of advantages and they're very smart. So I hope that it pushes past these limitations and that ceiling and they're seemingly off to a great start already. James Chapman says, do you feel 10 millimeter will go the way of 40 cal? No, I don't. 10 mil is awesome. And Joseph Meenan says, do you think ammo prices will settle down to what they were before COVID-19? Honestly, probably not entirely. You guys know the rule of supply and demand. Six months ago, 223 ammo was 20 and 25 cents a round for the really cheap stuff, and that was a solid price. Now you're lucky to see good quality brass case stuff in stock at all, let alone for that price. I do think it'll settle eventually, but it could take a long time, and it's hard to say if it will drop down to what it used to be. It's really difficult to say. I think it's going to take a while. My friendly fire question to you guys. Since we got great response from last week's poll about the best gun tuber, you guys love Paul Harrell, by the way. How about you guys tell me the top three things you look for when watching gun videos? Is it the quality of content like video and sound? Is it the knowledge of the presenter? Maybe their ability to present that information? Do you only care about what's gun? is being shot. What makes a good gun video in your eyes? I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this one. If you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to subscribe star, support us on there. That's where I'm grabbing the questions from. And that is it for this week's show. I would love it if you guys hit the like button to show your support. And if you think we've earned it, get subscribed as well. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry. You can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.